whatever parts the hoof and is cloven-footed and chews the cud, among the animals you may eat. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 3. This is easy to check as you can quickly see the shape of the hoof and how the animal eats just with your eyes. A cow can eat pretty much anything and miraculously transform it into milk, meat, and a whole range of other products that sustain our daily lives. The key to the cow's success lies here, the rumen. It's sort of the belief of every school child that the cow has four stomachs. That's not really true. What it has is one true stomach, the abomasum, which is exactly the same as our stomach. Upstream of that is a multi-compartmental fermentation vat, fermentation chamber, wherein live the microbes. Now, when the cow goes out to graze, she eats the grass really as quickly as possible and swallows it almost unchanged. That comes into the rumen, and at that point, it's really quite difficult for the microbes to penetrate through the cell wall and start the chemical digestion of, of, of the plant fiber. So what the cow has also evolved is this really elegant mechanism of rumination. In this, she moves the food round in the rumen, and then a bolus of food is regurgitated, passes up to the mouth, and then she takes it in her mouth and chews it rather as old cowboys would chew tobacco, 20 chews on one side, 20 chews on the other. This breaks it up, and it comes back down again into the rumen. The microbes, having done their work, then are passed out of the fermentation chamber into the abomasum where they heroically die and give up their lives to provide protein for the cow to produce milk and meat for ourselves. There are some that only chew the cud or only have a divided hoof, but you must not eat them. The camel, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof, it is ceremonially unclean for you. The hyrax, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof, it is unclean for you. The rabbit, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof, it is unclean for you. And the pig, though it has a divided hoof, does not chew the cud, it is unclean for you. You must not eat their meat or touch their carcasses, they are unclean for you. As for fish, everything in the waters that has fins and scales, whether in the seas or in the rivers, you may eat. Again, a very clear and easy guide to follow. No fancy tools needed. It's not just to avoid eating them, we should avoid touching them as well. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 24 And if you do end up touching it, the best thing to do is to wash. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 28 This is really great advice that matches our understanding of medicine and health today. There is also another section that lists out animals specifically to avoid. Leviticus chapter 11 verses 13 to 19 identifies bats along with vultures and eagles as animals we should avoid eating. Bats have been identified to host over 60 different viruses that can be passed to humans. As the only flying mammal, their unique immune system and high body temperature makes them immune to many of the viruses that they carry, making it easier for them to transmit them to humans. Scientists have tested vultures and have found over 15,000 diseases and viruses on a vulture's beak, many of which are deadly to humans. The animals specifically mentioned to avoid really do carry more risks to people. God made some animals to keep the environment clean, and others that would be okay for us to eat. When this book was first written, they had no equipment to check for viruses or diseases. Yet this book clearly identified safe animals to eat and animals that would be especially dangerous for humans. It's amazing. This isn't possible by human intelligence and wisdom at the time. Only God could give such a simple guide that is still useful today.
Leviticus 11. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever parteth the hoof, and is cloven-footed, and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the hoof, as the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the hare, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the swine, though he divide the hoof, and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch, they are unclean to you. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. They shall be even an abomination unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, but ye shall have their carcasses in abomination. Whatsoever hath no fins nor scales in the waters, that shall be an abomination unto you. And these are they which ye shall have in abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination, the eagle, and the ossifrage, and the osprey, and the vulture, and the kite after his kind, every raven after his kind, and the owl, and the nighthawk, and the cuckoo, and the hawk after his kind, and the little owl, and the cormorant, and the great owl, and the swan, and the pelican, and the gear eagle, and the stork, and the heron after her kind, and the lapwing, and the bat. All fowls that creep going upon all fours shall be an abomination unto you. Yet these may ye eat of every flying, creeping thing that goeth upon all four, which have legs above their feet, to leap with all upon the earth. Even these of them ye may eat, the locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. But all other flying, creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you. And for these ye shall be unclean. Whosoever toucheth the carcass of them shall be unclean until the even. And whosoever beareth aught of the carcass of them shall wash his clothes, and be unclean until the even. The carcasses of every beast which divideth the hoof, and is not cloven-footed, nor cheweth the cud, are unclean unto you. Every one that toucheth them shall be unclean. And whatsoever goeth upon his paws, among all manner of beasts that go on all four, those are unclean unto you. Whoso toucheth their carcass shall be unclean until the even. And he that beareth the carcass of them shall wash his clothes, and be unclean until the even. They are unclean unto you. These also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth, the weasel, and the mouse, and the tortoise after his kind, and the ferret, and the chameleon, and the lizard, and the snail, and the mole. These are unclean to you among all that creep. Whosoever doth touch them, when they be dead, shall be unclean until the even. And upon whatsoever any of them, when they are dead, doth fall, it shall be unclean, whether it be any vessel of wood, or raiment, or skin, or sack, whatsoever vessel it be, wherein any work is done, it must be put into water, and it shall be unclean until the even, so it shall be cleansed. And every earthen vessel wherein too any of them falleth, whatsoever is in it shall be unclean, and ye shall break it. Of all meat which may be eaten, that on which such water cometh shall be unclean, and all drink that may be drunk in every such vessel shall be unclean, and everything whereupon any part of their carcass falleth shall be unclean, whether it be oven or ranges for pots. They shall be broken down, for they are unclean, and shall be unclean unto you. Nevertheless, a fountain or pit, wherein there is plenty of water, shall be clean, but that which toucheth their carcass shall be unclean. And if any part of their carcass fall upon any sowing seed which is to be sown, it shall be clean. But if any water be put upon the seed, and any part of their carcass fall thereon, it shall be unclean unto you. 
And if any beast, of which ye may eat, die, he that toucheth the carcass thereof shall be unclean until the even. And he that eateth of the carcass of it shall wash his clothes, and be unclean until the even. He also that beareth the carcass of it shall wash his clothes, and be unclean until the even. And every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth shall be an abomination, it shall not be eaten. Whatsoever goeth upon the belly, and whatsoever goeth upon all four, or whatsoever hath more feet among all creeping things that creep upon the earth, them ye shall not eat, for they are an abomination. Ye shall not make yourselves abominable with any creeping thing that creepeth, neither shall ye make yourselves unclean with them, that ye should be defiled thereby. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt, to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. This is the law of the beasts, and of the fowl, and of every living creature that moveth in the waters, and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth, to make a difference between the unclean and the clean, and between the beast that may be eaten, and the beast that may not be eaten.